I'm Michelle Shelton and I am a teacher in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Welcome to our fifth grade whole brain teaching classroom. Okay, welcome to my fifth grade classroom. Coach B asked me to give you a quick video tour of how we use whole brain teaching in my fifth grade reading room. I have about 60 students that rotate to me and I teach them reading, writing, and language. We're a testament to whole brain teaching because we are a 100% free lunch school. The children have been known to have behavioral issues here, which I'm sure lots of you deal with as well. Um, my class scores on the state test have risen significantly since I started using whole brain teaching and the behavior issues are virtually non-existent but more importantly the kids come to class and they love being in here they love reading and they have fun and that's really what's important that they're learning and having a good time while they're doing it I suggest that you get the whole brain teaching book you can get this on Amazon um, mine's written up <laughs> enough that I need a new one already. Read it front and back two to three times. You're going to find something new every time you read this book. Um, something that stood out to me that I've based my classroom on is in chapter three on page 10 where Coach B tells us that disorganized teachers breed chaotic classrooms. So something I really focus on is organization. I have lots and lots of books. All of my books are labeled by genre. We have tubs on our desk. The children are responsible for making sure they have four pencils, two scissors, and so on. They take responsibility for our classroom. Uh, they take ownership of our classroom and pride in the products that we have in here and being able to know where things are all the time in the same place eliminates transition uh, time wasters. So that is a great point in the book. Another point that Coach B makes in here is that um, grow or die. It's This may seem a little daunting, but take whole brain teaching one step at a time, one bite at a time. If you just give yourself that chance to take the leap and grow, you're going to be extremely encouraged with what you see in your whole brain teaching classroom. Okay, so when my students first come, on the first day, we start with the five classroom rules, and we guide our classroom all year with this. My class learned this in one day. It does not take very long. They're fifth graders, but it took one day, starting on day two, I have volunteers and they lead the rules at the beginning of class for the rest of the year. Our classroom rules are posted up here on the wall. You can get these free on Teacher Pay Teachers. You can get them um, on several people blogs. You can also get them on the Whole Brain Teaching website. The gestures that we do for the Whole Brain uh, five rules are Rule 1, follow directions quickly. Rule 2, raise your hand for permission to speak. Rule three, raise your hand for permission to leave your seat. I.e., whoop, that's a bungee jumper jumping back on his seat. Rule four, make smart choices. And rule five, keep your dear teacher happy. This is my power pick wall, and this is a really important part of my classroom. Now, I only teach the English language arts, but they do provide power picks for math, science, and social studies as well. Again, you can get these on the forum. You can get several of these on people's blogs. Uh, there's links on the Whole Brain Teaching website. I have them arranged so that we have numbers and letters to coord coordinate where they are, so I can say 1A, and they'll know it's third-person point of view. Um, we use these for a variety of things. We use academic vocabulary, uh, building vocabulary activities. Uh, each power pick not only tells the common core um, strand, but it also provides a picture, gives a question, the answer, and the gesture that will go with it. So that is a good reminder for the teacher as well as the student. As the year progresses, I'll have another entire wall that will include more power picks that we use. So by the end of the year, we'll have a power pick for every academic vocabulary word that we will use through the year. We also have a word of the day, and I keep that over on my whiteboard, and I will put my power pick of the day underneath that, and we will focus on that several times and often use that as our vocabulary candy uh, word. Okay, the scoreboard is one of the foundational things in whole brain teaching that makes the classroom run so well. When my students do something fabulous, I will give them a point and we will do a quick one second party. Oh yeah, 
if they are doing anything fabulous, it can be doing the gestures correctly. If I say class, they say yes, and it's so silent that I could hear a pin drop, they're going to get a point. If someone does something academically that we're just so proud of them, the whole class will get a point. Uh, just great behavior. It doesn't matter what it is, I'm going to give them a point. The negative side is never for an individual, it's only for the whole class. Uh, you never want to pinpoint one student as a negative. If they do, if I say class, they say yes, and I do hear that pin drop, they're going to get the negative point, and they do a mighty groan, uh, and they think this is fun. This makes it a game format, which keeps it exciting. What do they win if they end up during the day with more points than I do? Well, first of the year, they win the satisfaction of knowing they won. Just like if they won a video game or anything else, you don't have to give them of tangible prizes. It doesn't have to be candy or a treasure box. It can actually be the satisfaction of a job well done. As the year goes on, you can even add in things like if you win on the scoreboard, you can have a three minute dance party at the end of class or uh, one less homework problem, and they will work really hard to get just one less problem. So this is a really effective method of behavior management. Okay, we're in our third week of school now, and we have begun our super improver wall. You usually wait until the second or third week of school to start this. What this is, is a great way to celebrate your students. You will see lots of variations of these. You can choose sports or fish or whatever you want to do, but we have chose, chosen <laughs> judo belts for this. Every student will start on a white card, no matter what theme you use. Since I'm doing 60 students, it doesn't matter if their card is on the same line as the color. It can be anywhere. The color of the card tells us what level they're on. So we've just started, so everyone is a white belt right now. When they get 10 stickers, they level up. If they level up, they take their card out and give it to me with their 10 stickers, and I attach it to a positive letter that we send home to their family telling them, celebrate your child tonight. They have done something wonderful, and we need to do more of that for our students. To level up, we meet at the beginning of the year, and we set individual goals for students. This levels the playing field, so it's not just the straight-A students anymore that are doing phenomenal things. It's everyone in here. It can be for behavior. It can be for following the classroom rules. It can be for breaking their own academic record. They're competing against themselves, not other people. The goal is to become a living legend, which in our room is the black belt. When they get a star, I don't stop teaching class. I just say, great job, go get a star. I just keep this here. They come over, they pick a star, and they put it on their own card. If they level up while I'm teaching, I already have the next level cards cut. They just pull it out, put it in their slot, and they're ready to go. This is just keeping them, the class self-managing, keeping it moving quickly, and keeping them encouraged. They will never drop a belt color. It's only to provide encouragement, and they're only going to be moving up. Okay, one of the, the favorite things that I do in our reading class is using the genius ladder. Our students come to us, and they're not the greatest writers at this point. They still need to work on just basic sentences and paragraph form. So we do the genius ladder two to three times a week at least. The great thing about this is Coach B has already provided this for you. It's for free. It's a free download on the Whole Brain Teaching website. And he's got enough of these that you can go through your whole year with your classroom. It's basically just starting with blah sentences, article, noun, and verb. And then you move up to your spicy sentences where you're adding adjectives in. Then you move to an extender sentence where you're adding prepositional phrases and so on, and then moving up into a genius paragraph where they're actually doing adders and providing an entire paragraph that's focused on your target word. I have a paper that we fill out that um, basically matches the genius ladder, and I use this at the beginning of the year quite often, and this is also a download that you can have. Um, they fill these in and turn those in, and we just go over those together. Another thing that I do is I have a whiteboard um, in my room, and they will use this whiteboard genius ladder, 
and we do this in small groups so they can come over and they can write in their genus ladder there. They can also do this as a fast finisher project so they can come in and get bonus points for creating their own genus ladder over here. For oral writing, Coach B has provided enormous number of brainy posters that you can use and I have most of them hanging all throughout my room but these are just showing the gestures they're showing uh, what you're expecting the children to do in their oral writing and he's got the ones with the plain backgrounds and also ones with a little bit fancier backgrounds that you can choose from Okay, the last thing that I'm going to show you of the main things that we use in my whole RAIN teaching classroom are the practice cards. Now, we don't normally start the practice cards until Thanksgiving or uh, around that time. These are my practice cards that I use. Uh, because I have so many students, I have just created pockets with their desk numbers. When a student is needing a little bit of extra practice with one of our classroom rules here. I have white cards with the classroom rules on them and I will pull that card out and I'll put it in that student's pocket. They know that that means they need to come in at recess and practice the rule with the gesture for two minutes. If a student starts his day out blurting out, maybe on rule number two, needing some work, but then he fixes that and he does a fabulous job the rest of the day, I'll put a purple card in there which cancels out their white card. And those come a few weeks after you've started your white cards. Then if you've gone a few more weeks and they're reverting back and they're still struggling with that rule, you can move to a green card which you place on their desk and they make tallies as they notice, oh, I did a great job, I did not blurt out. They can give themselves a tally mark and really have a visual aid to see their improvement in that area. Thanks for visiting our classroom and please check the book out and if you'd like to uh, join our book club I would love to have you on that. Um, I help with that and award certification points to help you become a certified whole brain instructor and if you have any other questions please visit the whole brain teaching website wholebrainteaching.com. Have a great year!